It would seem that Kev hasn't been provided with the relevant occupational health and safety information or he's foolishly disregarding it. Without question, the number one priority of everyone in every workplace must be health and safety. When we're not diligent and become lazy with oh &S, people can get hurt, seriously hurt, and lives can even be lost. Employers have a responsibility to provide relevant oh &S information to all employees, contractors, and visitors. Safety performance must be continuously reviewed and improved. Employers also need to make sure there are systems in place to resolve oh &S issues and minimise the impact of any incidents. However, employees also have a responsibility to follow all oh &S policies and procedures to make sure they don't put themselves in danger or anybody else. Employees are also required to report hazards, near misses and accidents. Wherever you work in Australia, there are laws to make sure all workplaces are safe and healthy. These laws set out what everyone should be doing to make sure working conditions are safe. Remember, accidents cost a lot in pain, time and money. There are regulations and codes of practices that detail how you should carry out your day-to-day -day operations safely. These can be used in court as evidence, so you need to know how they affect your workplace. An accident is something that was not intended. Saying it was an accident is not an excuse. At work, it is our duty of care to ourselves and our co-workers that makes everyone responsible for preventing accidents. Pay attention to the things that are going on around you. And remember, make certain that all hazard and risks have been removed and you will be able to work safe. The four principles of OHS, identify hazards, assess risks, control risks, review control measures. It is important that both employers and employees are involved in identifying and eliminating workplace hazards. Legislation has outlined several ways of involving employees in health and safety, including designated work groups, health and safety representatives and committees, issue resolution procedures, as a work experience participant is not an employee, all discussions must take place with the host supervisor, work experience community liaison and their case manager. Workplace hazards can be put into the following five categories. Physical includes noise, vibration, extremes of temperature, clutter, electrical, fire, poor ventilation and lighting. Chemical relating to hazardous liquids, solids, gases and infectious substances. Environmental includes hazards relating to equipment design, incorrect handling, occupational overuse, slips and falls. Human behaviour includes fatigue, skill levels, noise, boredom, harassment, discrimination and abuse. Biological. This category includes hazards such as infections, bacteria and viruses. As an employee or work experience participant, you are expected to communicate, consult and use risk management principles to identify and eliminate hazards in the workplace. Health and safety must be constantly monitored and audited to continually improve performance. If you sustain an injury resulting from a work-related accident, seek first aid treatment if required. Report the accident or injury to your manager, supervisor or workplace health and safety officer on the day of the accident complete an accident incident report form. Employees and work experience participants can help to prevent future incidents by working with employers, hosts, community liaison coordinators and case managers to identify causes and eliminate risk. Risk assessment, assessing the significant risk factors involved in every task you do and putting into place measures to reduce or eliminate these risks. As a work experience participant, your work experience community liaison coordinator or case manager will have already completed a risk assessment with assistance from the host. The five steps in risk assessment. Document the activity, identify the hazards, document the control measures, identify who is responsible, monitor and review. The hierarchy of control must be followed in the following order when addressing a hazard risk. Elimination. Removing the risk. Substituting. 
using a better or less risky piece of equipment or substance. Engineering controls. Finding ways to better design the work area, such as better ventilation, redesigning the layout or enclosing the area. If these are not productive or feasible methods of controlling the risk, then it's possible to use methods which generally rely on human elements to work. Administrative controls, such as training, work scheduling and job rotation, supervision and housekeeping. Personal protective clothing and equipment includes gloves, ear protection, overalls and masks, which provide a barrier to the hazard. This is the last option to consider when treating risk, as it is more effective to try to remove or eliminate the hazard. Your employer, host supervisor or case manager will let you know what personal protective equipment you need or may supply you with the correct safety equipment. You're expected to use the clothing and or equipment as instructed. Damaged, faulty or lost equipment must be reported immediately so it can be repaired or replaced. Depending upon location and assignment, you may be required to wear steel-capped safety boots, eye protection, high visibility vests and other PPE. It is essential to keep the workplace hygienic and free of clutter. Management and staff must regularly clean and maintain the premises on a daily schedule. Control pests and vermin. Follow correct storage and garbage removal procedures. Follow your workplace no smoking requirements. The fire warden and first aid officer also have very important roles in the workplace. For a work experience participant, the supervisor will advise on who the fire warden and first aid person is for that host location. In the event of a first aid emergency, a speedy and appropriate initial response can greatly improve outcomes. Keep in mind that the first aid officer may not always be available. To enable timely and appropriate treatment, it is important too. Know who and how to contact the site first aid officer, the location of the first aid room if available, the location of first aid kits and equipment, emergency equipment spill collection devices, oxygen apparatus and eye wash kits, showers and hand basins. As an employee or a work experience participant, you are not permitted to work whilst under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. Always remember to advise your workplace manager or supervisor if you are taking medication which may affect your ability to work. You are responsible for immediately consulting with the manager or supervisor if you have safety concerns about another worker's use of non-prescription drugs or alcohol consumption. As an employee or work experience participant, you are expected to conduct yourself in a manner that does not give rise to the following. Workplace bullying or violence, for example, acts of intimidation, verbal abuse and indecent physical contact. Sexual harassment and discrimination of another participant. Any incident involving bullying, violence and or sexual harassment will be taken very seriously and needs to be reported to your manager or supervisor. Disciplinary action may result along with immediate dismissal. You are responsible for behaving in a professional manner and treating others with dignity and respect when you're at work. Reporting any incidents involving bullying or violence in the workplace to your manager or supervisor. It is important to have good knowledge of emergency procedures specific to your workplace. Emergencies may include fire, bomb threat, chemical exposure, serious injuries and personal assault. To ensure safety and avoid panic, you must Know who your warden is and follow their instructions. Review the emergency floor plan. Know where your designated assembly points are. Always participate in fire drills. This information should be displayed throughout the workplace. Should you have any queries or concerns, please speak to your manager or supervisor. Evacuation tips. Dial triple zero or notify the main switch. Check that no one else is in the area. If there is no danger to you, assist injured people. Leave via the nearest emergency exit. Do not use lifts. Go direct to the designated meeting point. Remain there until your manager or supervisor has checked that everyone is present. Do not leave this area until you are told to leave by your supervisor or the police. Do not go back into the building until the police or fire brigade tell you it is safe to do so. Standard operating procedures are written directions on how certain functions must be carried out. SOPs can be found around equipment, machinery and almost every part of a factory. It is essential that everyone follows SOPs strictly. Only managers have the authority to make changes to standard operating procedures. A safety data sheet is a document that explains how to handle a substance. 
These documents are found around chemicals, cleaning materials and certain food products. If you are required to work with products that have an SDS attached to them or displayed near them, ask your supervisor to explain what is required, particularly if you are using chemicals for cleaning or sanitising. At all times you must be aware that the human body harbours germs and bacteria. Apart from this, you may work closely with customers and other staff. Always take daily showers, wear clean and pressed clothes, have clean and neat hair, limit the jewellery you wear, have short, clean fingernails with clear or no nail varnish, clean and maintain teeth, keep any open cuts or wounds covered while at work, wash your hands after eating, smoking, handling garbage or using the bathroom. Hand washing. Wet your hands, apply soap, lather and scrub for 20 seconds. Don't forget to wash between your fingers, under your nails and the tops of your hands. Rinse for 10 seconds. Turn off the tap. Dry your hands. Never take unnecessary risks when moving heavy, bulky items. Always consider the alternatives to manual handling and ask whether mechanical aids are available. If there are no other alternatives, always follow safe manual handling practices including Check weight and dimensions of the object, not by lifting it. Always use team lifting or mechanical aids for large, awkward or bulky items. Ensure that your path is free from obstruction. Stand as close as possible to the load. Bend your knees and keep your back straight. Remember, if in doubt, don't lift. A confined space may be a space that is not intended or designed primarily as a workplace, could have a restricted entry or exit, contains or is likely to contain an atmosphere that has potentially harmful levels of a contaminant, low oxygen levels or anything that could cause engulfment. Ensure you notify your manager or supervisor immediately if there are changes to work activities including exposure to new materials, processes or machinery. Work site including location, major restructuring or renovations. This is important because new hazards may arise and the employer or host may need to determine whether additional training or skills may be required. Accidents can occur in the office environment. There are many objects and devices that may cause hazards. Please consider the following. Workstations. Check that you have a good working posture. Back support, arms are generally at right angles and elbows close to your body. Check your screen monitors for minimisation of glare, comfortable screen brightness and comfortable screen height. Check that items located on your desk are within accessible reach to avoid bending and twisting. Keep your work area clean and tidy. Check that traffic and aisleways are free from rubbish and equipment. Close filing cabinets when not being used. Report any OHS related hazards to your workplace supervisor including damaged or faulty electrical equipment. Do not store excessive items, documents or clothing on, around or beneath your workstation. Do not attempt to repair damaged or faulty electrical equipment. This includes changing light bulbs. Do not block or obstruct fire escapes or firefighting equipment. Before operating plant or machinery, you need to be trained and instructed in its use. This is required even if you have worked on similar equipment previously. Never attempt to clean or repair plant or equipment when there is an active power source. Make sure items are tagged out and isolated. Never remove or modify safety guarding. Check that you do not have loose clothing, accessories or hair which may get caught up in machine parts. Do not undertake the task if you have not received suitable task specific training. Should you have any questions, please speak to your manager or supervisor. When using vehicles including forklifts and cranes, you should ensure you have the appropriate license and are authorised to operate it. Wear a seatbelt, even if you are only moving the vehicle a few metres. Never ride on the back of forklifts or in a bucket of a lift truck. Do not leave the vehicle running whilst parked. Check for overhead obstructions such as power lines. Stay within designated speed limits and vehicle area. Be careful of pedestrians in the area. Do not undertake the task if you have not received suitable task specific training. Should you have any questions, please speak to your manager or supervisor. When using, storing or transporting hazardous substances, it is important that you note the following. Always check with your supervisor on how to handle the substance. Always check what personal protective equipment you require, such as gloves, respirators and eye protection. 
Know where and how to use material safety data sheets. Do not handle unlabeled containers. Check for locations of eye wash units and safety showers. Report any major spills or leakages to your supervisor immediately. Do not undertake the task if you have not received suitable task-specific training. Should you have any questions, please speak to your manager or supervisor. Chemicals are stored in the following ways. In a separate storeroom away from other products. The storeroom must be well lit and ventilated, not a stuffy cupboard in a corner. Heavy containers must be stored down low to avoid dropping and spills when moving them. In sealed, labelled containers with directions for use and first aid directions. Away from naked flame. Never stored in food containers. Never leave lying around where customers may come into contact with them. Always follow the instructions on the containers when using chemicals. Never mix chemicals. Some mixtures may explode. Electrical accidents can result in serious injuries and death. You should not attempt under any circumstances to undertake any electrical repairs. These activities should only be conducted by a qualified electrician. When using electrical items, consider the following precautions. Do not use electrical equipment or leads where there are signs of damage, such as a frayed cord or use of insulation tape. Report faulty, broken or poorly maintained electrical equipment. Follow the systems of isolation and tagging and never use equipment that is tagged out. Only use electrical equipment for the purpose it was designed. Always check for signs of electrical equipment exposed to water. Spills are also a major cause of accidents in the workplace. If you spill it, clean it up. If you did not spill it, clean it up. Find out who did it and remind the person that the spill could have caused an accident. Major spills from large drums of liquid, overflows, etc. may need more than one person to clean up. Check what type of spill it is by reading the instructions on the container. Use safety equipment, gloves, mask and goggles if necessary. Ask someone else to help for two reasons. Firstly, it will be cleaned up more quickly and secondly, you will have someone with you in case you need help. In this way, the danger may be removed quickly. Place a slippery floor sign at the place of the spill. Let other staff or customers know that the floor is wet and slippery. A clean and tidy workplace is an efficient, pleasant and safe place to be. Housekeeping includes removal of rubbish according to policies and procedures, clearing clutter, sanitising, cleaning and recycling. Environmental and legislative requirements are met. Out of specification product and packaging is isolated. Cleaning equipment is correctly stored after use. Germs move easily from raw food to cooked food. You can stop this with good food handling. Wash your hands before handling food. Keep cooked food separate from raw foods. This includes the use of colour-coded cutting boards and knives. Wash all fruits and vegetables before use. Clean and sanitise all surfaces and equipment. The risk of falls should be carefully considered at all times and especially when working on unstable, sloping and or slippery surfaces, using access equipment and near unprotected edges or openings. It is important to always carry out a risk assessment prior to performing any work at height. Noise at the workplace is a major cause of hearing loss. It contributes to social isolation and reduced quality of life, increased absenteeism, worker turnover and lowered work performance. It also contributes to workplace injuries and accidents. Excessive noise is made up of two parts, the loudness of the noise and the period of time you are exposed to the noise. Continuous exposure to noise above 85 decibels during an 8 hour day is considered to be excessive noise. The noise of a heavy truck is about 85 decibels, while a jet taking off is about 120 decibels. Noise can have the following effects. Annoyance and speech interference. Interference with concentration and thought processes. Sleep disturbance, fatigue and aggression. Reduced immune response. High level noise may cause initially dull hearing with perhaps ringing in the ear as well. With regular exposures, this will lead to loss of hearing and other negative health effects. Low-level noise may reduce concentration, cause stress and have similar health effects as high-level noise. Effective noise control measures will increase sense of well-being and privacy, which leads to a safer and more productive work environment. It is essential to observe all signage at all times in the workplace. Remember, signs are there for a reason. Ignoring them could put your own and others' safety at risk.
Uh, I say, Kev, you married? You know I got Betty. Amazing. Uh, you know, every employee has the right to return home safe to their family at the end of the working day. Even you. It's what I've been trying to tell you all along. Have we learned anything here? Yeah. OHS is everybody's responsibility. It is important to note that a work experience participant is not an employee. A participant does not have the same entitlements as an employee, including remuneration, superannuation and work cover. Yeah. Safety. Yeah, let's talk about safety, yo. What sensational and helps me daily? Occupational health and safety. You want a warm vacation and hell get lazy Occupational health and safety, yo Let's keep it safe, yo If you think that hard hat looks so lame Well, it's better than making that combo claim Yeah Don't be that guy, it's not that hard Don't modify that safety guard Yeah, I'm stopping the crisis by rocking the high vis, I'm safe. We're all safe, yo. Strap on that harness when you're working up in the sky. That's your only time you'll be.